Hello and welcome back. I thought it was important for me to do this small video on Hugh Edwards. It's not my typical content and it won't be a long one today, but I've seen all your comments and it's unreal that it's just been a month since I did the most disgraced celebrities and someone else from the BBC club has been charged. I'll briefly go over who he is and then we'll get into the case, timelines, the BBC's response and the other person charged in this case. But let's get into it. Hugh Edwards was born in Wales in 1961. He graduated with a first honours degree in French. He spent a short time on work experience at a radio station Swansea Sound before joining the BBC as a news trainee in 1984. In 1986, he became the parliamentary correspondent for BBC Wales and he worked his way up. Between 1994 and 2003, he presented the BBC Six O'Clock News and at this time it was the most watched news in Britain. In 2003, he became the main presenter of the 10 o'clock news on BBC One. He also did lots of other shows and documentary-like things for the BBC. He covered some of the biggest events from royal weddings, the Diamond Jubilee, the death of Prince Philip, and he announced the death of Queen Elizabeth II. Now let's talk about his salary. He earned 550,000 to 600,000 as a BBC presenter. His salary was reduced in the light of a gender pay difference found within the BBC. His new salary was 520,000 to 530,000 a year as of 2018. It was reduced again in 2019. In July 2023, it was raised by 40,000. Now we've covered the basics, his work for BBC and his salaries, I wanna get into a timeline and then I'll explain the timeline. On May 18th, 2023, a family member of a young person who was 17 at the time made an in-person complaint about the behaviour of Hugh Edwards. On May 19th, 2023, they contacted the BBC in a 29-minute phone call to the BBC's audience services team and the details were referred to the corporate investigations team. It's reported that they actually had to contact the BBC because they were hearing nothing from them, which absolutely boggles my mind with all the issues the BBC has had, which we covered in a previous video, you would think the process would be better. But we will get into that. July 5th was the last time he was seen on air. He covered King Charles' visit to Scotland. On July 7th, 2023, The Sun published an article that a BBC star that was unnamed at the time paid 35,000 for content to someone beginning when they were 17, but a lawyer acting on behalf of the young person told The Sun there was no truth to the claims. On July 9th, 2023, the BBC confirmed that a male presenter had been suspended from all duties. On July 12th, 2023, Hugh Edwards' wife, Vicky, revealed it was him. She said he was receiving hospital treatment for depression. Shortly before Hugh Edwards was named, the Met Police reported that it found no evidence of crime and would not investigate further. On November 8th, 2023, Hugh Edwards is arrested on suspicion of making indecent images of children. On April 22nd, 2024, he resigns from the BBC, having not appeared on air for months. On June 26th, 2024, Edwards is charged with three counts of making images of children. And now it gets to this week. On July 31st, 2024, Edwards appeared at Westminster Magistrates Court and pled guilty to three counts of making indecent images of children between December 2020 and August 2022. So let's get into the timeline and the case. We have found out this week that Hugh Edwards has been charged with three counts of making indecent images. The charges involved images shared in a WhatsApp chat between December 2020 and April 2022. They contain six Category A images, 12 Category B images and 19 Category C images. Two of the Category A images showed a child aged between around seven and nine. The images were shared with Hugh Edwards by Alex Williams, who is from Wales. Williams had received a 12-month suspended prison sentence on the 15th of March 2024 after pleading guilty to possessing and distributing Category A, B and C images. So who is Alex Williams, the man Hugh Edwards got images from? Williams was a 25-year-old convicted you-know-what. The Met Police said that Alex Williams pleaded guilty to possessing and distributing Category A, B and C images as well as possessing prohibited images of children. He was sentenced to a suspended 12-month jail sentence on March 15th, 2024. It was actually from investigating him that Hugh Edwards also got caught. Police said an investigation into Edwards began after a phone seized by officers as part of an unrelated probe revealed the broadcaster's participation in a WhatsApp conversation. 
In court this week, it was revealed that seven of the 41 indecent images sent to Hugh Edwards were of the most serious type. The final indecent image was sent in August 2021. Altogether, Williams sent him 377 images. The bulk of these were sent during a two-month period. On February 2nd, 2021, Williams asked whether what he was sending was too young, to which Hugh Edwards told him not to send any underage images. He continued sending them. It's estimated the age of most of the children was between 13 and 15, but one was aged between 7 and 9. No more indecent images were sent after August 2021, but the pair continued to exchange legal images until April 2022. So let's get into the BBC's acknowledgement. They have made a statement and it's pretty lengthy, but I will read the whole thing. The police have confirmed that the charges are not connected to the original complaint raised within the BBC in the summer of 2023. Nevertheless, in the interest of transparency, we think it is important to set out some points about events of the last year. In November 2023, whilst Mr Edwards was suspended, the BBC, as his employer at the time, was made aware in confidence that he had been arrested on suspicion of serious offences and released on bail whilst the police continued their investigation. At the time, no charges had been brought against Mr Edwards and the BBC had also been made aware of significant risk to his health. Today, we have learnt the conclusion of the police process in the details as presented to the court. If at any point during the period Mr Edwards was employed by the BBC, had he been charged, the BBC had determined it would act immediately to dismiss him. In the end, at the point of charge, he was no longer an employee of the BBC. During this period, in the usual way, the BBC has kept its corporate management of these issues separate from its independent editorial functions. We are shocked at Mr Edwards' actions and our thoughts remain with all those affected. Hugh Edwards admitted to accessing photographs of children as young as seven and in court they laid out what could potentially be his punishment. The judge said under the law there is a prospect of rehabilitation, a community order and treatment programmes that could be considered as alternatives to a custodial sentence. Sentencing guidelines set the starting point for any jail term for possession of a Category 8 image at 12 months with a range of 26 weeks to 3 years. The starting point is 26 weeks for Category B image and a community order for Category C. The judge said features to be taken into account for Edwards include that the images including moving images and the young age of the child thought to be 7 to 9 years old in two of the Category 8 images. Mitigating factors are Hugh Edwards' early guilt plea, his previous good character, his mental health issues and what Mr Hope said is genuine remorse. He was released on conditional bail and will appear at court on September 16th for his sentencing. Now it's on to the questions because this is another huge scandal. He was actually only investigated because they were investigating Williams. Were there other claims? Will we find these out? Why did the Met Police not identify him as soon as he was charged? The public were left completely in the dark. Like the previous cases, there are many questions getting thrown at the BBC and I'm going to go through the best ones I've seen and ones I think myself that need to be answered. And the first one I'm going to go through is the pay rise. As mentioned before in this video, he received a pay rise between 2023 and 2024. So he was suspended in July 2023 after the allegations in the sum. And by April 2024, he resigned on medical advice. The BBC have stated he did not receive a payoff. But the BBC were aware of his arrest on serious charges in November 2023, yet they gave him around 200,000 of licence fee payers money for five months up until his arrest and resignation in April. Obviously at the moment we don't know whether he received his pay rise before or after the BBC were aware of his charges, but people want to know who decided that it was okay for him to receive 200,000 of public money, what was the justification and who made that decision? So we know that the BBC learnt about Hugh Edwards being arrested on the 8th of November, but this was kept from the media. I mean, BBC is a news outlet and they didn't report on this. And, well, everyone learnt on Monday about his charges. The BBC said that they were in strict confidence by the police and it was not to be shared. But what exactly the BBC knew is not clear. The BBC Investigations correspondent Joe Pike told Newsnight that he had been able to confirm that the BBC was told those serious offences concerned child images, but the BBC weren't aware of the details, but they were aware of the general nature of the allegations. The BBC didn't sack Hugh Edwards on his arrest because they knew the significant risk to his health and at that point it is just allegations. But in my previous statement, they said it would act immediately to dismiss him if he had been charged. 
which is actually a really confusing response because he was charged but he still hadn't gone to trial he hadn't gone to court so let's get into other claims and allegations after he was named by his wife as the senior broadcasting figure bbc 2s newsnight broadcast allegations concerning hugh edwards behavior towards junior members of staff the bbc promised to investigate all allegations in February, an independent report into the BBC's complaints procedure found the need for greater consistencies in how complaints were processed. And I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist, Look, just look at their history of it. But no further details of the investigations have so far been made public. Will these become public now? Will we find out? Of course, there are plenty of other questions and hopefully we start to get some of them answered. We will find out more and what he'll be sentenced in September. But sorry if this seems a bit rushed or shaky. I normally do in-depth research, but I, I thought I needed to get this out. Like, I saw your comments. <laughs> and it's just unbelievable that within a month of doing the most disgraced celebrities that another one comes along and, you know, what do you know? The BBC. Of course, it isn't just the BBC. In part two, I'm covering the likes of politicians and, and all other sorts of people, but in my video the most disgraced celebrities a lot of them I, I i wasn't aware of it wasn't my generation i'd heard of them but i didn't really know some people were completely new to me but there was this overwhelming pattern of somehow being connected to the bbc and it it made me really jaded and i'm just astonished like within a month it's someone else and just how the bbc have handled it they still haven't found the balance between ge of care for their employee but also what the public deserve to know they're funded by the public's money. I think the way they handled claims from the sounds of it and what's reported, it's still bad. There's a lot of things that, you know, still haven't changed, but we will find out more as it leads up to a sentencing in September. But this concludes our video today. As always, thanks so much for watching and until next time.